for our ternary ionic compounds, we're going to have a polyatomic ion present. So we're going to have um, a grouping of several atoms together. Uh, often, uh, these are just uh, two nonmetals together, but they can include metals. Uh, and it has a um, charge on it. So it's a polyatomic ion. Most of our polyatomic ions are anions. Uh, we do have two cations that we will be using also. Um, so NH4 is one of our cations, it's a plus one charge. SO3 is an anion with a negative two charge. Hmm, where's our table? Oh, Ways down. So for the metal ions that form predictable charges, uh, these have been called type 1 metal ions. Uh, for the ones with predictable charges, all that we are using is, all that we're using to name them is the name of the metal. And if we're talking about the ion, we throw the word ion after it. So aluminum with a plus 3 charge is the aluminum ion. Calcium with a plus 2 charge is the calcium ion. Potassium with a plus one charge is the potassium ion. For most of the transition metals and a couple other metals, uh, they form more than one ionic charge on a regular basis. So, to identify what charge is present when we're naming them, we have to give separate names for the uh, separate charges. There are two systems uh, that we use this. The original system is a Latin system. Uh, the more modern system is a stock system. The stock system is uh, easier to use and more universal. It works for more elements than the Latin system does. Stock system is easy, is that we're going to name the element followed by a number that identifies the ionic charge. So Fe2 plus is going to be iron 2. That's how we speak it. How we write it is iron followed by Roman numeral 2 in parenthesis. Fe3 plus is going to be iron 3 which is iron followed by Roman numeral in parenthesis. So the stock system works for all the elements. The Latin system works for the older elements, older elements, the ones that were known longer. Because uh, in um, the older days, uh, we named elements with Latin names uh, we have since changed some of the names with the Latin names into English names. But in Latin system, we're going to use the Latin name of the element. Uh, elements usually have two common charges. The higher the two charges, you're going to have um, IC suffix on the Latin name, uh, ic IC suffix. The lower the two charges, you're going to have uh, OUS us suffix on the Latin name. So for Latin system, we have to know the Latin name. We have to know the two common charges. So for iron, the Latin name is ferrum. The two common charges are plus two and plus three. So that would mean that plus three would be the ferric iron, and the plus two would be ferrous. Copper, the Latin name is cuprum, which is why the symbol is Cu, not Co. The two common charges are plus 1 and plus 2. So the plus 2 is cupric and the plus 1 is cuprus. 
Tin, the Latin name is Stanum. The two common charges are plus two and plus four. So tin four will be called Stanic, and tin two is Danus. So we're going to have to be able to use the, Latin, the stock system and be familiar with the Latin system. For anions, monoatomic anions, so these are going to be nonmetals with a negative charge. We're going to take the name of the nonmetal and change the suffix to IDE suffix. So bromine becomes bromide, sulfur becomes sulfide, nitrogen is nitride, oxygen is oxide, hydrogen is hydride, iodine is iodide, fluorine is fluoride. Hmm. We've said this already, except for the transition elements. Um, transition elements uh, often have a plus two charge along with some other uh, additional charge. Uh, so plus two is a common charge for the transition metals. Uh, we did this one also. So uh, the predictable charges. Uh, for the anions, minus one for the halogens, uh, minus two for oxygen group, minus three for nitrogen group. So for binary ionic compounds, we're going to be able to write uh, the formula, we're going to be able to uh, write the name. Well, we're going to be able to write the formula from the name and the name from the formula. Uh, or, for the predictable metals, metals with predictable charges, type 1 metals, uh, we're going to be able to take the metal and the non-metal and write the name and the formula. For the binary compounds that contain um, a type 2 metal, it means uh, one with multiple charges. Uh, so with this, we can't start with just the metal and the non-metal. So we're going to need the name to be able to write the formula, or the formula to be able to write the name. Because either one of those will give us the ionic charge. From the formula, we'll be able to identify the charge on the metal, uh, and, and or the name gives us the charge on the metal. So when we name binary ionic compounds, we're going to give the name of the metal first, the cation first, and then we're going to follow up by the name of the anion second. And from the periodic table, the elements grouped into columns on the periodic table. So elements in the same column, we're going to expect to have similar chemical formulas as other elements in that column. 